back at Costco and Kimberly here, our marketing executive for Lolo Halco, <laughs> is going to be walking through Costco with me and we're going to be talking about uh, all the things that she likes to buy here. So can you buy raspberries even though they're out of season? Um, so usually I try not to buy um, berries or any fruits that are out of season just because you have to truck them all the way from Mexico. If you look here, you can see that they're from Mexico. So I try to buy berries that are in season and I also don't buy berries that are non-organic because they're highly sprayed with pesticides and um, it's just way easier to buy them frozen during the winter time if you really want to get some antioxidants in. So I usually just buy the uh, organic frozen raspberries instead of buying fresh ones like this. Um, that have been trucked all the way from Mexico and probably don't really have a lot of nutrient value by the time they get here anyways. What's you buying? Um, ooh, that looks disgusting. That's messy. This is one of my huge hacks at Costco, um, organic cut leeks. Usually when you buy leeks, you only use about the bottom third of the leek and yeah. throw away the top. So they're actually quite expensive when you buy them just at the grocery store, um, which is fine, but these are organic, they're pre-portioned and pre-cut, and you can throw this in the freezer as well and just pull it out when you want to make soups or stock. So uh, this is one of my go-to for sure at Costco. I like that, that's proved have a sauce that is bad. So what? So it looks like there is soy, wheat, soybean, salt, sugar. So it's a pretty standard um, Asian sauce. It actually doesn't look like there's um, any how bad much, oils. How much sugar is in the label? Uh, five grams per serving, so 114 grams. So it's actually probably five servings in here. So Definitely not the worst for um, ingredients. There's a little bit of sugar in there, but there's no bad oils. So those would be maybe like a yellow light. I uh, put these in a fry pan with like a little bit of sesame oil and just toss them around for like probably a minute just till the color has changed, but they're still super crispy and it's an awesome little like side dish or snack. Yum, I've never done that. Yeah. Yeah, those are a go. Yeah, for sure. Baked spinach? Yeah, how do we feel about baked spinach? Yeah, I feel pretty good about it, but you guys gotta be careful because if there's one leaf that's going bad, the whole bag is gonna turn very quickly. So there's gotta be no moisture in the bag. Yeah, it does go bad pretty quickly. So this baked spinach is $2.99 and it's from the States. Again, I try not to buy any um, produce that's from the state. I try to buy it more, more locally, and I definitely try to buy organic um, because spinach is highly sprayed with pesticides like glyphosate, which is terrible for your brain. Um, but there is some organic spinach here. This organic spinach is only $3.99, so a dollar more for organic. It's still from the states, but um, that would definitely be a better option than this one. If your spinach is going bad, you can always just throw it in the freezer and then you use it in smoothies later so that it doesn't have to go to waste. The organic blueberries would be a good option, but they are transported here all the way from Chile, which by the time it gets here has probably been a lot of the antioxidants have been degraded and um, is probably a pretty bad carbon footprint boating them all the way here from Chile. So yeah, still a good option for nutrient value, better than the non-organic ones. As it's organic, like this is not wild salmon, so that's important to some people, uh, just from an ethical standpoint, so. Yeah, so yeah, you don't need to see organic on fish because if, if fish is wild, it shouldn't be organic. It's obviously organic if it's wild. <laughs> but usually, like when you see organic chinook filet, like this, this, I don't think this is wild fish. I think this is a farm. It has to be farmed. Even the smaller ones are like 13, so I'm definitely gonna pick up one of these. So this is um, wild sockeye salmon for 13 bucks. That's a great deal. I would say that's a go. You also want to note about salmon is can you tell the difference in the color between this fish and this fish? So this is wild salmon and this is farm salmon. You can tell this co red color comes from a nutrient called astaxanthin and it's really good for your brain and you can tell how much less there is in this fish and usually that they add dye to this fish anyways in farm salmon to make it have this color. It's usually even more white than that because the fish don't have the nutrients that wild fish have. So not only are farm fish have more toxins in their water, but um, wild salmon also has a higher nutrient value. So you're gonna to wanna to pay a little bit more for wild than you would for something farmed. Definitely don't wanna have any farm salmon in your diet. The prawns anywhere that aren't local. Where are they from? It doesn't, doesn't say, but they're definitely from somewhere in uh, Southeast Asia. Like my guess would be Thailand. And why don't we all want to buy prawns from Thailand? Oh, just different quality of water standards. There's tons of polluted water down there. So, I mean, these are bottom feeders already. You're already not getting um, the, the best 
I guess quality of seafood when you buy prawns in general. So I'd always try to stick with uh, West Coast prawns or spot prawns when they're in season if you can. Totally. And it doesn't say anywhere where they're from? No. That's kind of lame. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely want to try and stick to local seafood. You want to avoid any Fukushima in your fish. There's some frozen wild caught Atlantic cod. 21 bucks. I think that that's a pretty good deal. Let's see what so there's any other ingredients that. Just one ingredient, a lactic cod. That's a good deal. And I like buying frozen fish because it can be frozen and kept fresh right away. Kirkland farm tilapia. Again, anything farmed you're gonna wanna stay away from. Uh, yellowfin tuna, let's see where that's from. So it doesn't say where it's from. It does say it's wild caught, which is good, but you actually don't know where it's come from. It's come from somewhere in Asia. Then um, tuna really collects heavy metals. So I would say that's like a yellow light maybe caution with using that. Wild caught Maui Maui, I like that fish. Uh, 24 bucks. Um, again, it's wild caught so it's good, but it doesn't actually say where it's caught from either. So it's probably a yellow light with that one, used with caution. Um, so these prawns actually tell you where they're from. They're from Argentina and they're wild caught. So um, yeah, it would be better than buying something from over in Asia. So those ones would be a go. So these don't say exactly where they're from, but it says that they're caught on the East Coast and they're wild scallops and they are 24 bucks. So yeah, I would say those are a go, full of really good healthy omega fat. Meat section here, it looks like pretty much everything is not organic, and I bet that pretty much everything is not gonna be grass-fed either. So you can get this big thing of pork for 16 bucks, but I really wouldn't touch any of this stuff if it's not organic. Um, Non-organic meat is gonna be full of pesticides and antibiotics and a whole bunch of harmful stuff that's really bad for your gut bacteria as well as your brain, causes inflammation, has really bad um, fatty acid profiles. So you really wanna spend a little bit more money and get something organic and preferably grass-fed. Again, if it's grass-fed, the animals are gonna be much healthier and have much healthier uh, omega-3 and fatty acid profiles, which is gonna be better for your health. So you can just eat a little bit of a smaller portion and get something more expensive that's actually gonna be helpful for your health instead of harmful. And um, that way you can offset the balance of the cost. These are not healthy at all. These okay. are not healthy, but what's in them? Macaroons. Um, oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of ingredients. So yeah, tons of ingredients. Uh, sugar, powder, almond, egg white, cream, cocoa mass, xanthan gum, stabilizers. So I mean, not terrible, but these, not are, terrible. these are not something you're expecting to, yeah. to be the epitome of health. They don't have anything scary in it like canola oil. Yeah, that's true. That's good. Let's go out here. We've got some kimchi, got some crepes. What's in these crepes? Wheat flour, sugar, rapeseed oil. Don't Dark want that. Chocolate. What do you got there, Kimmy? Um, some chocolate hummus, which seems like a bit of an oxymoron. But, uh, <laughs> What's in it? Uh, chickpeas, water, canola oil, cacao powder, and date paste. So, I mean, nice on the date paste and agave for sweeteners. So that's interesting, but when you're comboing that with the canola oil, not yeah, bad. Yeah, that's a really bad combo. You don't want to have um, canola oil or uh, agave in your food. So I would stay away from that dark chocolate hummus, even though, like, why do you want dark chocolate hummus anyways? Seaweed, um, sesame oil, that's okay. Sesame oil is okay. Uh, mushroom, salt, chili peppers. Uh, uh, there's like a blue dye in there, which like isn't ideal, but yeah, that'd be okay to eat if you guys like sesame salad. Mm, yeah, mayonnaise is made with soybean oil. That shit is scary, I'd stay away from that. Here's some tempeh spinach dip. I'm assuming this is probably gonna have canola oil in it. Yep, first ingredient. No go. Miso dip with cheddar. Actually, ingredients in that aren't too bad. I mean, I wouldn't eat non-organic dairy, but um, this isn't the worst ingredients ever. I know a lot of people buy this hummus, but I'm pretty sure that it's full of junk. Chickpeas. Yeah, soybean oil right there. That's a no-go. See if this brand of hummus is even be any better. It's made with uh, green chickpeas. Green chickpeas, sesame paste, olive oil, lemon juice. Ooh, this is great. This is the first hummus that I would actually buy at Costco. That one's a go. A chunky guacamole. Let's see what's in here. Cilantro. Ooh, that's great. Nothing bad in there. That guacamole is a go. Planet soup. Water, coconut cream is great, dairy free. Baby corn, I'm not a huge fan of, but still not bad. Sunflower oil. Dun dun dun. No go. Sorry, Happy Planet. I know that you guys are supposed to be like a health soup, but um, you should get rid of the sunflower oil. 
first in, first out policy, so they should always be rotating so the oldest product is at the top, which they've done. But just to check the date differentials here, like this cheese expires January 28th. We're at what, Jen 25th right now? Yeah. Whereas if you pull one from one of the bottom shelves, all of a sudden you're getting product that doesn't expire until Feb 3rd. I pulled one that was Feb 25th earlier, so you just gotta be careful with Costco that you're checking the, the dates on everything you buy, because the top product is often the oldest product. Yeah, you don't want to get some old cheese. So there is like an insane selection of cheese here, even of the same types of cheese, there's lots. Um, so as far as cheese goes, I don't really include any dairy in my diet normally. I mean, I do eat it sometimes, um, but especially if it's not organic, you really don't want all that extra pesticides and glyphosate and antibiotics and all that kind of stuff in your dairy that you're going to be eating so i tend to just stay away from it because it's pretty far, hard to find high quality dairy especially at a place like costco i would usually try and buy something from like an artisan who's making good quality um either organic full fat dairy or um you know if you're just like indulging for one day just try and get something more on the higher quality side than buying something from costco um with that said there is one cheese that i do like from here i'll show you it is an aged cheddar and it's grass fed and it comes from New Zealand. So this is the one cheese I actually do like buying from here. Um, other than that, I haven't actually seen any grass fed or organic cheese uh, that you can buy at Costco. So if you are gonna buy um, cheese or you wanna include dairy in your diet, I would definitely make sure that it is um, organic grass fed and um, on the higher fat side, you don't want anything low fat. Okay, so here's some of the meat section. So this roast beef has got an insane amount of crap ingredients added to it, I would definitely not buy that. He wants to know how gross these are. Chicken breast packages. Hmm, let's look at the back. Like the bubbles in it, you know, where they like pump all the salty sodium water in it before, so it gives it more bulk. Gross. Chicken water dehydrated, chicken flour, chicken broth, vinegar, potato starch, canola oil, rice starch, and yeah, I would not buy those. But I mean, they're handy, but they're also um, not organic roasted garlic and chicken pasta so the ingredients are pasta chicken canola oil see look canola oil is in everything no go Costco here stocks the local salt spring island uh goat cheese goat cheese is actually a better option for you than uh cow's milk because it is less inflammatory and usually people who are allergic to um casein milk from cows are not allergic to the casein from goats so that's a good option if you're sensitive to dairy um, but cheese, pasteurized goat cultures, and olive oil. Yeah, that's a go. Another good option for cheese at Costco. It's Swiss cheese, so it's obviously from Switzerland, right? Is it? We hope. Made from Swiss milk, or made from raw, made from raw milk. Yeah, so usually um, places like over in Europe have higher quality standards when it comes to raising their animals. So if you're gonna get yeah, cheese from Switzerland. Europe, yeah, it's probably from Switzerland, then you're probably a better bet because they don't allow um, antibiotics and all that kind of stuff in their milk. So even though it's not organic, it should still be a good option. Plus when it ferments, um, it can break down some of the um, proteins that people are allergic to. So you might not be as sensitive to cheese that is aged like that. Here we've got some Wild Pacific Pink Salmon Burgers, 26 bucks. I think as long as they're wild, then they should be good to go. Um, let me double check the ingredients. So as you can see, while Pink Salmon is actually only one ingredient, they have a bunch of other crap, including vegetable oil that they've added to that, and beet juice to make it look more pink than it actually is. So that's a no-go. So there's a bunch of meat burgers here. Again, I definitely would not eat beef that isn't organic and preferably grass-fed. So I would stay away from these guys. Um, some organic California style veggie burgers. Let's see what's in them. There's 12 vegan burgers for 15 bucks. So the ingredients here, fried rice flour, versus corn, soy flour. Yeah, I definitely would not eat that soy flour or that canola oil or the corn. So I would not buy these. So here we've got some high protein, non-GMO, meat-free chicken fingers. Let's see what's in them. Enriched flour, don't want that. Soy protein isolate, don't want that. Canola oil, don't want that. Wheat gluten, don't want that. Rice flour, preferably, don't want that either. Yeah, I would definitely stay away from these. There's nothing but crap ingredients. There's more soybean oil and sugar. Yeah, that's pretty much like a glyphosate bomb in a box. I'd stay away from that. Also from my last video that I showed you guys. Um, yeah, like I said, now the second ingredient and also the third ingredient is uh, sunflower oil. So I definitely would not buy this, even though there is a bit of extra virgin olive oil in there. 
Um, yeah, you're gonna wanna stay away from that. Um, so these are organic Aussie bites. They look like some sort of like granola bar type thing. Ingredients, rolled oats. Oats I'm not a huge fan of. And salt of butter is good. Organic canola oil, and eh, don't want that. Sugar, eight grams of sugar for one piece. Uh, it's pretty bad. And because they have canola oil, I would say those Aussie bites are no good. But there's no, like the ingredients are much cleaner. Almonds, honey, organic coconut chips, pumpkin seeds, coconut oil, pumpkin protein, chia, cinnamon, vanilla flavor, and salt. Nice, yeah, that's a good ingredients list. How much sugar was it again? Seven grams for four pieces. That's not bad. Is that not bad? I mean, these pieces are way smaller than those ones in comparison. Paleo bites, I'd say, would be a yellow light. Use with caution. They've got a little bit of sugar in it, but not bad. Much better than this option here. So how do we feel about oats? For one, you definitely want to make sure that if you are going to be eating oats that you buy um, organic oats because oats are actually sprayed with glyphosate in the drying process to make sure that they don't accumulate any um, mycotoxins or any bacteria on them when they are being processed. So definitely make sure you buy organic and definitely does not help reduce cholesterol either. That's a gimmick. And um, there's much better sources of carbs as well as nutrient dense uh, fiber and other things. So I usually don't eat oats, but if you are gonna eat oats, make sure you buy them organic. 20 minutes and they totally reconstitute. Dried mushrooms, really good deal. Only 19 bucks for some really good gourmet mushrooms. Is there any other ingredients in there? No, just mushrooms. Good deal. All you gotta do is soak them for 20 minutes and you can use them like normal mushrooms. Let's see. There is some vegetable oil, so these are gonna be non Leslie approved. But, you know, <laughs> Sammy breaks Leslie's rules all the time. So. Yeah. But how bad though? What else is in them? Um, potatoes, vegetable oil, seasoning, which is a variety of different ingredients, potassium chloride, malic acid, citric acid, so standard ingredients for chips. So, I mean, other than vegetable oil, fairly. Not fairly the worst. Good. No, no trans fat, no MSG, cholesterol. I mean, that's kind of all. So when you see bags um, like these Miss Vicky's chips and they say no trans fat on them, that's actually a lie because when you process things like vegetable oil, it always creates trans fat when you expose them to high heat like that. So just because before when the oil was pre-processed didn't have trans fat doesn't mean that there's not trans fat in it afterwards. So that's actually a false advertisement right there on that bag. There's always going to be trans fat in anything that's fried like that or exposed to high temperatures with fat. Oh yeah, but what else? What did Nothing. they do to them? There's dry beetroot. That's all it's in it. It's just dry? One ingredient. Yeah. Yeah, that's a go. On software, not fried or baked. Nice. I and fiber. Like this says seven grams per serving. Uh, I think four. But I mean, I wouldn't base your grams of fiber on something on a package. You should probably just eat fiber and vegetables. This is cooked brown rice and quinoa together. It's got garlic and amaranth. Let's see what's in it. Oh, organic brown rice, organic quinoa, organic amaranth, organic sunflower oil. So I wouldn't buy it for that reason, but at least all of the grains are organic, which if you are going to be eating grains, um, definitely make sure that they're organic. So this is tri-colored quinoa. Um, it says it's Canadian grown, which is great, but I don't see if it says that it's organic. If you are gonna eat quinoa, you're gonna want it to be organic. You're gonna want to soak it, toss out that water, and then cook it again in some clean water to make sure you get rid of all of the lectins that are on the outside of quinoa that are disrupting for your gut bacteria. Uh, and then use them as any other grain. That's a yellow light. Use with caution. So this is aged balsamic vinegar from Costco. Uh, again, not organic, but let's see what else is in it. Cooked in constant great mess, red wine vinegar, and it contains sulfite. So that's not great. And it's also made from grapes that are non-organic. So you're gonna have a ton of pesticides and glyphosate in it. So I would buy something that is organic. But again, every type of um, balsamic vinegar is gonna have some natural sulfites in them. So if you're sensitive to sulfites, I would stay away from that. Dun, dun, dun. There's the beast itself. Stay away, red light. Um, organic coconut oil that I buy. It's from Costco. It's great. It's only 17 bucks. It's even better than Superstore and you get a nice big tub and it's organic and virgin. So that is definitely a go. Um, so this is exactly what you want to look for when you find uh, coconut oil is that it's cold pressed, unrefined and additive free. Boom. I actually love shiitake mushrooms. These ones are dried. Let's see what's in them. So shiitake mushrooms, oil blend, palm oil, canola oil, rice bran. Yeah, you're just gonna wanna buy regular mushrooms. These have other stuff added to them. 
water, peppers, diced tomatoes, citric acid is fine, onions, garlic, salt, onion. yeah, this is a great salsa. Lots of veggies and no um, added salt, no artificial colors. I would say that would be a go. Let's try the hot sauce. Let's see what's in it. Vinegar, water, salt, and garlic powder. That's a go. Nice job, Franks. Chicken broth, organic chicken broth, gluten-free, ready to use, fat-free, no artificial colors or flavors. Let's see what's in it. Organic canola oil, that's a no-go. And I also don't like buying chicken broth that's made from chicken broth concentrate because that's just not good quality. I'm gonna, if you're gonna buy chicken broth, make sure that you're buying good quality bone broth. Guys, avocado oil is $3.50 off right now. How much did it cost? Uh, I think it's 11.50 now. 11.50 for a big bottle of avocado oil. You can use this at high heat. It says right there up to 260 degrees and it's excellent for cooking. Great source of omega-3 fats. That one's a go. A soy sauce. I don't eat anything that soy, but this one does say it's preservative free. Let's see what's in it. Water, soybeans, wheat, salt, brewing start. Okay, so not too bad if you actually eat soy, um, but I like to stay away from soy products. What you got there? I was thinking about these apple chips. These remind me of Kit being Kit. Do you remember these? Yeah, Kit. what's in them? Apples. Just apples, just Dehydrated apples. apples. Dehydrated apples. I mean, there is seven grams of sugar per piece, but I feel like, you know, as long as you're eating in moderation, it's no better, no worse than eating an apple, so. I agree. Good choice. Dehydrated, I like it. Everybody's been obsessed with these popcorners, so let's see what's in them. Yellow corn, sunflower oil, cane sugar. Yeah, sunflower oil and cane sugar. That's literally just going to, sunflower oil is gonna glycate the sugar. It's really bad for you, but I mean, it's a chip. So if you're using it once in a while, what the heck. Guys, they have eggs here, but I don't see any that are organic or free range. So I would not buy eggs at Costco and I definitely would not buy egg whites either because the yolks are the best part. They do have some organic eggs. They don't say free range on them. They're organic so that the chickens will get a little bit of uh, free area to roam around in the sunlight. Um, so those are not bad option, but I would prefer to buy free range. Um, it's a two pack of coconut yogurt. So it is vanilla. So it's obviously gonna have some sugar added. It's about 13 grams per three quarter cup, which is probably about average in my opinion for a flavored yogurt. So yeah. what's, uh, what's in it? Um, it's plant-based. So it is coconut milk, vanilla preparation, which has some cane sugar, pectin, natural vanilla flavor, and lemon juice, tapioca flour, cane sugar, again, fire bean protein, pea protein, and then some vitamins and bacterial culture. So hmm. overall, pretty clean. Not bad. If you can find one that's just plain, that would be better, but I like that they have a coconut variety. So here, Olympic has made some grass-fed organic vanilla yogurt. So I'm betting there's gonna be some sugar and whatnot adding to those, but at least they are grass-fed. There is a little bit of sugar added to each one, but it is organic grass fed. So that's a better option if you do like eating. Um, I definitely stay away from 0% yogurt. There's really no need to not eat fatty yogurt because that's one of the best parts of eating dairy is the fat. So I don't think I'd waste my money on that. The hemp hearts, I really like this Manitoba brand because I like supporting Canadian brands, but this hemp heart usually comes in a green package. That's the organic one. And hemp hearts are pretty heavily sprayed with pesticides. So I usually buy the organic one from Superstore. And I actually think it's about the same price. So I would opt for that one instead of this one. Green tortilla chips. Let's see what's in these. Ground corn, canola oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, brown rice, black seeds, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds. Um, yeah, I would say definitely no go. Three different types of vegetable oil. Gross. I would have considered this to be totally honest. What's in it? Dried strawberries, which include cane sugar, dark chocolate. Is it? How much sugar is in it? 17 grams for five pieces. So. Yeah, it's pretty high, but it's not bad. There's no crap ingredients. We'll buy this trail mix. Let's see what's in it. I like this one way. Yeah, that one's good. <laughs> <laughs> Milk chocolate, not a fan. Sugar, cornstarch, dextrin, sunflower oil. Yeah, I would definitely stay away from this brand of Kirkland trail mix. Cashews, raisins, almonds, cranberries, which do include some cane sugar, walnuts, and sea salt, and it's organic. That's it, no vegetable oils? No vegetables. Nice, that's a go. Two clusters. Cashews, almonds, cane sugar, from rice syrup, and there's five grams for five clusters. That's not bad. That's the okay ingredients. Those are yellow light. Barbecue, crunchy lentils, what's in them? Roasted lentils seasoning, which includes some cane sugar, tomato powder, spices, garlic powder, cornstarch, um, and then sunflower oil. Sunflower oil. But high, what is that? It says high oleic, yeah, it's still no good. Still no good. Hmm. But I mean, yeah, I would stay away from them, but at least it's better than a chip, right? The clusters, let's see what's in them. Organic sunflower seeds, cane sugar, 
So no crap ingredients, but there's four grams of sugar per serving, which is 20 grams. Meh, those are okay. Um, crunchy bite. Dark chocolate, wild berries, sunflower oil. Yeah, you definitely don't want to have sunflower oil in your chocolate inside this beef jerky. Sugar, water, sea salt. Eh, not bad. How much sugar? Seven grams of sugar per one eleventh of the bag. Yeah, try measuring at one eleventh. Yeah, it's a lot of sugar. How good are they? What are they? Dark chocolate sea salt pretzels. It's like a pretzel turtle. <laughs> What's in it? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Car caramel. Oh, really? Ooh. Let's hit that. Okay, sample. We won't buy them though. Caramel, dark chocolate, and pretzels are the key ingredients, but there's lots of other stuff in there. Soybean oil, vegetable glycerin, corn syrup. Okay. Soybean oil. Yeah, we don't oh. like soybean oil. That's that's a no-go. I always buy these. Brookside. Oh, yeah. Well, there's definitely some corn syrup in there, but I don't see any... Canola oh. oil. Yes. <laughs> Say bye-bye, Brookside. <laughs> no soil. Definitely a lot of sugar. How much sugar is in it? Uh, 17 grams for two pieces. Yeah, I mean, if you really love dog ch or chocolate-covered mangoes, it's probably not the worst option. But yeah, that's a lot of sugar. This, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen it. It's actually in these lint chocolates because they are delicious. I like these little bars because these are por portion controls, right? Cocoa mask, sugar, cocoa butter. I love that they don't actually have any milk in them. That's great. And they are 70%. I usually like to stick to 85% or bigger on my chocolate. But I mean, if you're transitioning to dark chocolate, it's a good option. And I'm, it's 21 bucks. I'm totally buying this. Kimmy's getting them. It's a winner. Okay, so we already said no to the artichoke car because it's got canola oil. Sunflower. Oil. Go. Oh, that's a go. I Sun love these. Tomatoes. These are awesome. And such good value for $12. I, 12 bucks. I think we're going to get them. Hey, I might get one of those. Yeah. Right here. I have to buy these. I know that they've probably got some sugar in them, but I love just having like pickled beets on hand to throw in a salad or something. Yeah, it's beets, water, and sugar, vinegar. How so, much sugar? Six grams per one beet. But I mean, I beet are, I don't know how much of that is natural sugar. Beets are already pretty high in sugar, so. True. And also beets are really good for your cardiovascular system. So, mm. yeah. yeah, not bad. My guilty pleasure is eating these with mac and cheese. What about that antipasto? I think it's delicious, but I think it has got some bad stuff in it. Mm, take a look. Tomatoes, cauliflower, carrots, sweet pickled onions, green beans, dill pickles, olives, mushrooms, tuna. It does have some canola oil and sugar. Um, How much sugar? Three grams per serving. A serving is 30 grams, so not bad. Not terrible. Yeah. It does have some canola oil. Cassavellos. Mm -hmm. These are awesome. Um, Any bad ingredients? They're packed only in water. They are salted, but most processed olives are salted as well. I mean, for value, they're great value at nine fifty. Nine bucks. I mean, organic that. as well. Salt is low health co approved. We're not afraid of salt. This is sunflower oil, though, but also sesame oil. So, I mean, from an oil standpoint, not the best, but if you're thinking about having a chip versus having a piece of seaweed, I would go with seaweed. Yeah, seaweed has a lot of good health benefits for eating it, but I'd try and find one without the uh, vegetable oil in it. That's it. <laughs> if you weren't here, I'd buy this. That's the turtle thing with the canola <laughs> oil in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so these are the keto chocolates that I bought the other day and I actually trying them. They're 85% chocolate, which I love. They're actually so delicious. They have a little bit of like texture in them too from like the almonds and the coconut. And there's only four grams of sugar per serving and they're personal size. So you can just throw them in your lunch so easily and they don't have any dairy. I'm a huge fan. These are definitely a go. Don't have any sweeteners. Usually like keto products have like a bunch of weird sweeteners in them and these actually just use cane sugar, which gives it a little bit of um, sugar in, in the nutrient value but because it's darker chocolate, then it's still low sugar. So I really like those. So these are dry roasted with sea salt. I'm really into that because it doesn't have any bad oils to add and sea salt is great. We're not afraid of salt here. It's actually really important for um, hydration and your electrolytes to get enough salt. Um, so yeah, dry roasted is great as long as it's not at super high temperatures to damage the fats in the almonds. Um, I actually really like this dry roasted with sea salt. Perfect. Um, I've had a friend show me these before and I'm pretty sure they have some weird ingredients added to them. Yeah, soybeans, wheat, and salt. Yeah, I think that's a bit of weird stuff added to your almonds. I would stay away from this. Hand cream. Guys, let's see what's in it. Shea butter, avocado oil, macadamia oil, 
So just like you're, when you're buying oils to put in your diet, you also don't want to have any vegetable oils or um, oxidized oils on your skin as well because we know that when you put things on your skin, it gets absorbed into your bloodstream within 26 seconds is usually like the average that they tell us. When you're buying things like hand cream and whatnot, you don't want to have any sunflower oil or soybean oil or any of that kind of stuff on your skin as well as in your diet. So when you're looking at Costco and buying this stuff, especially if it's for your kids, um, make sure that it doesn't have any of those um, toxic oxidized oils in uh, your skincare either. Yeah, I bought this the other day. Do you like it? Yeah, I, you oh, I it haven't sweet? opened it yet, but... I really don't like when protein is sweet tasting. So most collagen is actually unflavored and it but doesn't it's taste collagen like protein, anything. That's why I wasn't sure. Mm. No, I think it's still just regular. So yeah, nothing, nothing weird added to it. The only ingredient is collagen peptides. One kilogram for 50 bucks, that's usually pretty good because I usually buy for 50 grams on Amazon for organic grass-fed collagen. I buy that little black And one. it's 40 bucks, so it's 10 bucks more for almost double the size. Yeah, I know. I usually like to buy just like the powder that you can mix it into stuff. I guess mm -hmm. if you're really trying to like get in more reishi to help with anxiety. Why would you mood. take this? Reishi is really good for anxiety, decreasing um, stress and cortisol, huh. but it's something that you have to take for a long time over time. It's not just gonna help with one dose, so. Yeah, maybe buying in bulk like this is. I've it, kind of fallen off my wagon with taking my. Uh, oh, this stuff's good. Um, with taking my collagen, I probably should get back on it. Be really propolis. Good. Oh, that's really good too. If, if you you're guys, feeling sick, it's great antioxidant. Yeah, really good. Be propolis is excellent um, natural remedy if you're feeling cold. If you've got a sore throat, um, yeah, I think that's a great option. Thirteen bucks is really good. I'm into that. There's like a double package here of D3. It's um, twelve bucks, which is like a really good deal. Uh, I feel like that would be good, but you also want to make sure that you take D3 with K2. So I usually take a dropper that has both of them, but you could take them separately as well. Jameson Probiotic is 30 bucks, um, 10 billion cultures. Yeah, I'd have to look further to see if these are good quality, but um, you can buy probiotics on the shelf. They don't have to be refrigerated, but you have to buy from a brand that has actually stabilized the probiotics. So I'd have to look into this brand more, but um, looks like it'd probably be a safe bet. So this is tea tree oil, 100% tea tree oil, and it's 15 bucks. Tea tree oil is a really great antiseptic if you guys get cuts or if you want to use it to put uh, on your face or anything like that. I love tea tree oil. Melatonin you can buy here. Actually, it's just like a one pack, five milligrams, and it is nine dollars. So yeah, that's not a bad price for melatonin, but I actually don't really recommend taking that melatonin unless you're like traveling or trying to get back onto a sleep schedule. You'd probably want to take at least 10 milligrams, but melatonin is actually a hormone that can disrupt your normal like sex hormones and all that kind of stuff. So definitely do not give melatonin to kids. Um, but if adults want to use it just once in a while, I would say that's okay. So Keto NCT Coconut Organica Powder. So is it just like a coconut creamer? Prebiotic fiber, I'm a fan, coconut powder, and MCTs. Oh, so it's just like an MCT powder. Yeah. How much is it? 40 bucks for 600 grams. That's not bad, MCT creamer. So powdered MCT can be really great if you want to add it to your coffee to make it really like silky, like regular um, dairy uh, mixes up creamy in your coffee. But this doesn't actually say which types of MCTs they use. Usually I like to just get the C8 variety, which is what comes in the Bulletproof MCT. Uh, and the Nutiva, but this also has a prebiotic in it as well, which is really great and it's dairy free. So I think that's a good option, especially uh, for that price point. Um, premier protein, all of this kind of crap that comes in these bottles. All, I've read the ingredients before. I don't think I need to read the ingredients, but there's a, just a bunch of crap in them. I definitely would not buy these shakes. As suspected, look at that ingredient. Soy protein, no. Soy oil, no. Look at all of this crap ingredients in here. Plus they have added sugar. Okay, I'm actually a really fan of this Manitoba Harvest brand. So let's see what's in these babies. Hemp seeds, sunflower seeds, sugar, dark chocolate, pea protein coconut oil, seven grams of sugar per bar. That's actually not too bad and it's got some pretty clean ingredients. I would say those would be okay, especially for your kids. So, Kind Bars. I know that Kind usually has a ton of sugar in them. Honey, palm kernel oil. I definitely stay away from palm kernel oil if it's not sustainably sourced. And if it doesn't say it's sustainably sourced, it's probably not. So I would stay away from that. Sugar, glucose syrup, rice, oh yeah. 
I definitely would stay away from kind. Five grams of sugar per bar is actually not that bad. At least there's no uh, vegetable oil in them and no soy. So we're done Costco shopping. How did you feel about that Costco shop, Kimmy? I guess it's a good two hour Costco. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you found that uh, was surprising the ingredients in it? Um, I think in the last little while I probably just not looked at the ingredients as close as I used to on a lot of packaged products. Um, thinking that I'm picking something up that's organic, it's going to be great and um, I don't need to question the ingredients, so that was good. Well, I open it. Yeah, so do you think these types of videos are helpful for people for realizing what's actually in their food? Yeah, absolutely. Alrighty, there you go.